And we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another of Vaden uh, webinars. Today's webinar, we are very excited to introduce to you uh, the newest product of Vaden aimed to make your application more secure and to help your team ensure the security of your application. The, the, the new product is called the AppSec Kit, and today's webinar is titled How to Secure Your Vaden Application with AppSec Kit. Uh, my name is Tarek Orabi, and I'm a product manager here at Vaden. And presenting with me today is Tamash Mack, who is one of the our le uh, senior software engineers who have been working uh, in developing the AppSec kit. I will do some presentation of the product, high-level presentation, and Tamash will show us a demo of the, uh, the kit in action. Before we start, however, just a few housekeeping rules. Uh, all lines are muted during the webinar. If you have any questions, please do ask them. You can find the question panel, uh, the questions panel in the lower right of your screen. And if we can't answer your question immediately, we will come back to it at the end of the of the of the webinar. And uh, just as a reminder, we will send you all the link to the slides of the recording within 24 hours after the webinar is finished. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with Vaden, but just in case some of you aren't, just Vaden is a company with a mission to help uh, build and modernize Java-based applications. And our aim is to enable teams and companies to build and modernize Java-based applications successfully, quickly, and cost-effectively. And in order to achieve this aim, Vaden offers two different frameworks, Vaden Flow and Hilla. And both frameworks bring a great developer experience and pro provide uh, ready-to-use UI components and enable you to automatically build the communication between your front end and the back end. And these two different frameworks are there to ta tailor for different applications and teams because different applications and teams may need different stacks. So Vaden Flow empowers Java developers to build their whole UI and their web application purely in Java without having to touch any JavaScript or HTML, whereas Hilla is for teams that need to use uh, TypeScript in the front end and integrated with uh, a Java backend. Before we start, uh, just we would like to get your feedback about a couple of questions. So here are a couple of polling questions to just gauge like your current uh, security practices and the kind of challenges that you face in your organizations and practices. So the first question is, how much is your organization focused on removing vulnerabilities from your Vaden application? So on a scale of one to five, if you can, please go ahead and to the polling, uh, polling tab on the bottom right side and answer, give your answer to this question. All right, I'm not sure. I cannot see actually the answers. So, yeah, okay, now we can see it. Okay, so most of you think of this very high level focus and followed by a very high level focus, moderate level focus. So most of you do agree that it is to, to a high degree uh, something that your organization is focused on. Moving on to the next second polling question, what methods are you currently using to address security for your application, the application specifically that are built with Vaden? And you can here select multiple options. I'll give you a moment to, to read the options and, and select all that apply to your cases. So code reviews, that seems to be quite common, of course. Scanning for vulnerabilities during local development also ranks high. Scanning for vulner vulnerabilities in code repos also high. And, and CI CD tools as well is, is something that is highly uh, practiced uh, among you today. Well, thank you for the answer. And the final polling question uh, is, uh, what are your biggest challenges with application security for Vaden applications? So here you have multiple options. Also here you can select all the options that apply. So if you if you can, please provide your answer to this polling question. So 
So some of you here, the, the results are a bit so far, understanding which issues in VOD and dependencies are relevant to me. Okay, and that's certainly something that the AppSec kit should help you with. Uh, effort involved in updating to new versions. That's also, of course, a concern. Discovering issues in transitive dependencies and catching vulnerabilities too late in the development process. Well, thank you all for, for providing these, these uh, participating in this poll and providing this feedback, much appreciated. So to start, as I mentioned, I'll just give an introduction to the challenges that the app, uh, the, in general, the challenges with application security in general, and how the AppSec kit that is just recently introduced can help you address these challenges. And followed by that, Tamash will show a demo, like a live demo of the AppSec kit in action, and he will show how the AppSec kit can be used to detect vulnerabilities and help you mitigate these vulnerabilities. Just very briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept that the concept of software supply chain has been very central in, in discussions regarding security recently, and the concept of software supply chain, it refers to the, all the steps and practices involved in the software development life cycle from development, management, uh, deployment, delivery, maintenance of the software supply chain. And so this is from the initial conception of the software until the actual delivery to end users. And in this supply chain, software supply chain process, there, uh, the, there is a central role for open source dependencies. And they play a critical role in that they enable, so they have, of course, the, the very good benefits of enabling rapid development. One doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. You have open source dependencies that you, you can use in your application to leverage pre-existing codes and for common functionalities and thereby accelerating the development process. And which, of course, leads also to cost efficiency and increase the productivity. So that's the good side of it. Uh, and uh, there's also like it's important to note that there are two that, like dimensions or two classifications of open source dependencies. We have the direct dependencies that I, as a developer, when I am developing, I add them directly, the libraries and frameworks that I add di directly to my project. But also there are the transitive dependencies, and those are the dependencies of the dependencies. So, so the libraries that I am depending on, they are bringing on their own dependencies. So if I'm including Java library A, and this library is internally relying on library B, then this library B becomes a transitive dependency. And of course, as we mentioned, like this open source, obviously, uh, dependencies bring uh, rap benefits, many benefits, but on the flip side, of course, they can also introduce risks and vulnerabilities. And there are many ways in which uh, this can uh, like manifest itself. One thing is that, of course, you can have things like execution path vulnerabilities or ex uh, vulnerabilities related to the data flow uh, of, of within your application or creating exposing endpoint in your application or uh, messing up with your memory, the, the memory structure of the application and so on. And of course, these vulnerabilities can exist both in the direct dependencies or in the one of the uh, transitive dependencies as well. When it comes to Vaden, and since most of your, your applications depend on Vaden, when it comes to Vaden itself, Vaden uh, ensures that it takes proactive approach to managing the vulnerabilities in its own dependencies. And this in, involves like employing best practices, uh, like continuous monitoring. So we have like uh, both for direct and transitive dependencies. So we utilize automated tools and manual processes to, to check that all our dependencies are free from vulnerabilities. We do regular dependency updates. We do security audits. We also like disclose when there, we when we do find a vulnerability. We disclose this, and we give like the the, the recommended action to uh, avoid this vulnerability. And we, of course, we have patch releases that remove the vulnerable uh, dependencies if they are found. So from from Vaden's side, that this is something that's taken care of. But of course, the question is what happens with the other dependencies as well? And how do you know quickly that there is a vulnerability, even if it exists within a Vaden uh, own dependency? Related to that, there is the concept of software bill of material, or which is abbreviated as SBOM. 
And this concept, it refers to a detailed list of all the dependencies or all the components and libraries that exist within your uh, a piece of software in, in general, but in, a, in your Vaadin application uh, in particular. And this SBOM is really relevant to the software supply chain security because it ensures the transparency just provide you with a clear visibility into all the components that exist in, in, inside your web application. And also it's important for vulnerability management. So when you do know that there's a vulnerability existing, then you need to know whether or not it, it, it affects your software or not. And SBOM help you do this. And of course, there's also other uses for SBOM, like such as license compliance and so on. But importantly, also SBOM and SBOM generation and monitoring is important for regular regulatory and standard uh, compliance. So if in certain industries, especially, and uh, there might be required the main the con constant maintenance of an SBOM. And especially like in the US and the EU recently, there has been increasing uh, push for re more regulations that require soft all software vendors to uh, create up-to-date software bill of material. This is just a sample security vulnerability report that you can find in any uh, in any of the vulnerability databases. This one from the GitHub advisory advisory database. There you can get something like a short summary, the impacted package version, and where is this uh, uh, version uh, vulnerability patched and the severity of the vulnerability as well. But in general, when it's, we're talking about software supply chain, there has been recently so-called shifting security to the left. And this concept referred to the practice of integrating security measures earlier in the software development lifecycle, rather than treating them as an afterthought to be dealt with, dealt with at later uh, steps. So, here, the, the relevance of dealing with things early is that, well, you detect issues early. Uh, you also reduce uh, any the need for any late revision. So rather than waiting to the last minute only to cover a problem and delay, say, the delivery of your, of your new functionalities, you can actually address issues early. Uh, it also enables you to improve the compliance, right, and enhance response time when you uh, discover vulnerabilities. And in general, the more you, the earlier in the process one discovers the vulnerability and address it, the cheaper it is uh, to address this vulnerability rather than waiting until the vulnerability makes its way into production systems and uh, being used by end users. On another note, also, there is the challenge when we talk about software supply chain and software supply chain vulnerabilities, there is often the challenge related to false positives. And the concept of false positives refers to the times when security tools incorrectly tells you that there is a vulnerability when there is not a vulnerability in your code or in your software. And, and this has this is problematic for many reasons. Like one, it's like it leads to resource drain because you have to keep constantly addressing more false positives and it consumes valuable time and resources, like diverting your attention from actual vulnerabilities. And it also delays your releases. Like you again, you have to re respond to these things instead of releasing to the to your users and market quickly. And importantly, also it leads to desensitization and trust erosion. So if you have a false alarm, if you have a, like this, as if like you have in your home, like a fire alarm that's constantly beeping, even if there is no actual fire, then eventually you will disregard it at the risk of actually missing when there is a real fire. And similarly, false positives when it comes to software supply change introduce this risk. And here there's a quote from the defender that as much as 25% of security analysts time is spent chasing false positives. So this is a huge amount and a huge constraint on, on the resources and the ability of security teams to address security challenges quickly. And just these are some of the reasons why false positives might arise. So maybe someone thinks that there is dependency in the project where it's not actually depends. So that takes time to analyze whether the dependency exists or not. There's also inability to, that's related also to the first point, inability to identify a version of vulnerability in, in your project. 
or even more seriously that the vulnerability is part of the dependency so it's sort of part of your of your application but it's actually not used in a vulnerable way so it can be used but it cannot be really exploited in your specific application either because you are not actually using it in a vulnerable way or because there are other protections in the software against the specific vulnerabilities. And here where like the AppSec kit or the motivation for the AppSec kit uh, arises. So the AppSec kit is important because supply in general, supply chain risks attacks are on the rise. And these are some statistics from a, re a recent uh, report by Sonatype uh, regarding the state of software supply chain support. And as noted here, that over the last years, there has been 742% average annual increase in software supply chain attacks year over year. And there are many examples like one can think of like Log4j vulnerability in 2021 or Spring for Shell also vulnerability. Like, vulnerabilities that allowed attackers to execute arbitrary code on, on, on your systems. And it's not just that this increase year over year is, is huge that, and, and this is like symptomatic of this, is that people continue to download many dependencies with vulnerabilities, even though it is known that these dependencies have vulnerabilities. And it's worth noting also that most of these vulnerabilities, six out of seven as noted here, are actually coming from transitive dependencies rather than dependencies that are directly added to the project. So, and we believe that the increase, this increase in supply chain risks is due to the lack of dependency visibility. So identifying the complete and updated list of open source dependencies is challenging, like generating the SBOM is challenging. Delayed action issues are found later in the development life cycle when it's more expensive to fix. And finally, alert fatigue. Again, an excessive number of false positives lead to the dilution of real threats. Like then you don't actually focus on real threats. And this is where the AppSec kit, what it aims to address. And it's basically a tool that is integrated in the Vaden development work for, workflow that performs automated security checks, checking your application Again, it's known vulnerability database to make sure that you don't have any vulnerable dependencies. So the first thing that it does, it produces a software bill of materials that includes all the direct and transitive dependencies of your application. It identifies vulnerabilities in those direct and transitive dependencies. It also importantly reduces the noise and waste of time by filtering out or flagging out the false positive vulnerabilities for your dependencies in the Vaden framework. So if the Vaden dependency itself brings in a vulnerable uh, dependency, and if this is a false positive vulnerability, it's not a real vulnerability, it's a false positive, then Vaden provides through the AppSec kit its own analysis to tell you that this is a false positive and why this is a false positive, so that you don't have to worry about it. And finally, it's built, the AppSec kit is built into the Vaden development workflow as Tamash will shortly demonstrate so that it is again on the left so that it is as close as possible to the development life cycle uh, early, as early as possible in the software development life cycle so that you can address the issues uh, as quickly as possible. And this is my slide before last, but just that how it actually, uh, how it reduces false positives is that it, uh, again, it, gener it generates the S-bomb, it scans this S-bomb against a known uh, vulnerability databases, for example, the National Vulnerability Database and the GitHub Advisor Database. And then it shows you the true positive. If there is a dependency that has a vulnerability, it will show it to you as true positive. If it's Vaden related dependency and Vaden has its own analysis of showing that this is not a true positive, this is a false positive vulnerability, the kit will show you this analysis as well so that you don't have to worry about this dependency as, as far as Vaden is using it, at least. And just to note that today, the AppSec kit is supported for version 7 and 8 of Vaden, Vaden 7 and 8, but very soon we are planning to add support for the kit for on Vaden Flow 24, Vaden 24, 
23 and Vaden 14, as well as to Hill as well. And with that, I give it to Tamash to show a demo of, of the case. Thank you, Tarek. So I would like to start uh, with our Wadine documentation. Uh, you can find here a documentation uh, about OPSEC kit. This is our general starting for OPSEC kit. And uh, we have here one getting started documentation. Uh, I will just go through quickly on this documentation and uh, I will describe what, what you need to, to be able to use the OPSEC kit. There are two things what you need. First, you need to add this uh, OPSEC kit dependency. We have a uh, dependency for Vadin 8 and we have also for Vadin 7. The other thing is the Cyclone DX Maven plugin. This plugin is responsible for generating the SBOM. You need also to add this to your BOM XML. Uh, this Cyclone DX Maven plugin can be configured. Uh, this is a default configuration for it. Mm, you can define in which phase do you want to run it. And uh, you can also define the output directory where to save the SBOM. If you have these two things, then uh, the AppSec kit should run on your local environment. Um, if you don't use the server push annotation, then you need to add that also to be able to get the notification from the AppSec kit. Um, you can add the push notification and you, you have a dependency for that also. The rest of this uh, getting started documentation is about the AppSec kit UI but I will show that in my live demo. Based on this, today I prepared a, a demo application. Wadin, um, Wadin provides um, vulnerability analysis for the last four versions. Upsec it works with all Wadin 8 versions, but we provide for the last four version analysis. Fortunately, we don't have uh, vulnerabilities in these last four versions. So in this demo application, I'm using now one older Wadin version to be able to show a vulnerability. In my POM XML, I added the Wadin uh, upset kit for Wadin 8. And under the plugins, I added the Cyclone DX Maven plugin also. It's the same what we, you can find in the getting started documentation. If you, I generated, uh, I started the application and uh, the SBOM was generated during the generate resources phase. And based on this output directory, you can find the SBOM under the resources. It's here, it's a JSON file and it contains all the dependencies and the tr their transitives of your application. You can enable the debug logging. Uh, Wadin Upset Kit has a um, debug logging, which, which can be helpful. Um, you can see what, what's happening uh, inside Upset Kit. Now I will start the application. And I will open my demo application. During startup, uh, the Vadin upset kit uh, scans for vulnerabilities. And after it um, scans periodically, you can configure this uh, scanning period um, by configuration. As you can see, during startup, uh, the upset kit found three vulnerabilities and the notification appeared here. And we also Note here that uh, two of them, those are two uh, criticals. You can open the upset kit UI after. It will open in a new tab. And here you can find the 
vulnerabilities. And on the other tab, you can find the dependencies. Basically, these dependencies are the dependencies from the SBOM file. Now I will talk about this vulnerability stop. Here you can find all the vulnerabilities uh, what have been found in your application. Uh, in this table, you can see the vulnerability name or identifier. These identifiers are coming from the databases where we get the vulnerabilities. Um, you can see that there is one from GitHub advisory database and the other is the CVE ID and probably it's from national vulnerability database. And next to it, you can find the dependency. And you have the severity. The severity comes also from the databases with the vulnerability. And there is a risk score. This risk score is calculated uh, based on CVSS um, score. This is a common vulnerability scoring system. And you can find uh, these calculators uh, and you can calculate this risk score on your own also. And the last two columns are the analysis columns. Uh, one is for Vadin analysis, where Vadin provides these analyses, and uh, you can find here if the vulnerability is false positive or true positive. At the developer analysis, uh, you can add your own analysis, and you can also set um, uh, the state of the analysis. After I will show how can you do how can you do that. After NDS, you have some filters. Uh, you can filter on these uh, vulnerabilities if there are more. For example, if I filter on a true positive uh, vulnerability, I will get those. But you can also filter on other uh, columns. On the dependencies tab, you can find a list of those dependencies. You have the dependency. There is a vulnerabilities count beside it. Uh, it counts the vulnerabilities for dependencies, and it will show you. You have the dependency group, the version, and also the severity and the risk score there. And you can you have also filters here, what you can use. And one more thing I want to mention: there is the scan now button here. You can use that if you run, run, uh, want to run a scan immediately. It will run a scan and update the. OPSEC kit, the vulnerabilities in the OPSEC kit. Now I will show one. You can open a vulnerability details. In this vulnerability details view, you can find um, the dependency, which is uh, vulnerable. You can find a version, which is vulnerable. And you can find the purged uh, version also. And there is also a risk and the time of detection. Under it, you can find the Vadin analysis. For this dependency, uh, for this vulnerability, we don't have any analysis now. It's not a, it's coming from Vadin and dependency. And the rest of the details here are coming from also from databases. These are uh, some description about the vulnerability and you have some references where you can find more information about it. On the right side, you can find this developer analysis. Uh, where you can add your own analysis. You can choose from these statuses and uh, we can save that to our uh, OPSEC data. And I will just add and save it. And after, if I go back to the vulnerabilities, it will appear here that it's false positive. Um, with this, you can track um, the vulnerability history with this. This um, data is saved. I will show you. This data is saved in OPSECKIT data JSON. And you can use this file to upload to your version control system, and you can keep track about the vulnerability. I will show the other vulnerability. This is a true positive. And for this, we have a Vadin analysis. And uh, this says that uh, this JSOP uh, transitive dependency is coming from Vadin server. 
in this version. And uh, if you want to solve this, then uh, you need to update to the Wadin 8.17.0 version, where this uh, vulnerability has been fixed. And now I want to just demonstrate it that uh, it will disappear. I will go back to the my application. And I will use the suggested modding version. I will start my application. And there won't be any notification now because there are no vulnerabilities. And you can check this also with the debug logs that you can find there that the, there were no vulnerabilities now. In this one inversion, there are no vulnerabilities. That doesn't mean that you can't reach the OPSEC kit UI. And you have a parameter what you can use. If you use the OPSEC, what in OPSEC kit parameter in the URL, then you can reach the UI and you can see that there are no vulnerabilities now. But you can find the dependencies there still. And I can run the scan and there won't be any vulnerabilities anymore. I think that's all what I wanted to uh, demo today. And uh, I will give back the stage to Trek. Thank you, Tamash. Uh, we had just uh, one comment, and uh, please zoom in a little bit. The font is too small, but I'm not sure on which. Uh, can you show maybe the vulnerability again? Yes. The vulnerability view? Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, I can go. Now, so. <laughs> yes, it's no problem. I will just quickly. Uh... You're downgrading now again? Yes. Okay. I'm downgrading it to get to the vulnerability again. Okay. And I will start my application. The first scan will happen now, and we now found two vulnerabilities. Previously, there were three, but now we have two because uh, for one vulnerability, we already added some developer analysis, and we handled that that is not new anymore. So if you add your own analysis, then you will be just notified about the new ones. So I can zoom in now more. Yeah. And. Uh, I can show again the vulnerability details here. On the top, you can find information about the vulnerability. Under it, you can find the what in analysis and description and some references. Some vulnerabilities have, has more, more, dis, more description. And uh, yes, here you can find the developer analysis. All right, yeah. Okay, thank you, Tamas. Thank you. And let me share my screen once again. Uh, yes. So uh, just to just to sum up, like uh, as we saw, uh, the app circuit. Uh, is a tool to increase the security of your application and it complements other tools. So there are many other tools out there that one can use. There are do-it-yourself and open source scanning tools like Dependency Track and OSV and other ones. There are commercial tools as well like Sona Type, JFrog, Saint Snake and others. There are and many other security tools and AppSecKit complements existing tools. And it has the advantage of shifting left all the way to the developer's local environment. And this is a bit more of a unique value there. So 
in so far as it integrates with the development workflow of Vaadin specific workflow, that's a unique value of the AppSec kit. It also identifies false positives within Vaadin's code to reduce also like alert fatigue. And that's also something unique about the AppSec kit. And, uh, and also in principle, the, the, the list of false positives are available in case you want to integrate it with any uh, other uh, security tool as well. And all in all, the AppSec kit provides main three values. Uh, it increases your dependency uh, visibility by generating the SBOM, providing a comprehensive view about all the dependencies, direct and transitive in your application. It makes it easier and faster to fix issues when they arise. So because AppSec kit regularly scans the SBOM and checks against several vulnerability databases to identify any vulnerability in the in the dependencies so and the results are again shown as we saw in the demo right in the ui during the development environment making it easier to fix it fix these vulnerabilities earlier and at a lower cost and last but not least it enables you to focus on what matters by highlighting any false positives related to vaden and its dependencies so that you can focus on things that are actually problems in your code and, and not chasing like uh, unreal threats. With that, I, we can address, there are a couple of questions in the, in the chat and um, I think a couple of them actually are related to the version. So to clarify again today, the AppSec kit is uh, available for Vaadin 7 and 8, but very like, very soon, that's next week, we are starting the work on porting the AppSec kit as well to Vaadin 24, 23, and 14, and to Hill as well. So within 20, the plan is within 2023, the AppSec kit will be available for these versions, starting from Vaadin 24 and moving down 23, 14, Hilla. And uh, with these versions, actually, uh, the AppSec kit will not be just, just to highlight, not covering the Java dependencies and vulnerabilities in the Java dependencies, but also vulnerabilities in NPM dependencies and front-end dependencies, which are relevant for uh, Vaadin 14 plus applications. Uh, yeah, so that's a question. Okay, so there is another question, Tamash, does the app sec kit automatically disable with production mode, or should we remove the AppSec dependency on production build? That's a good question. Yeah. The AppSec kit only works in development mode. So we check if it's production and it's not initialized yet. So there is nothing else to do exactly. So of course it shouldn't, it will not be exposed at all to the end user in production environment. It's only a, a development mode. Yes, only development mode. And can and another question: Can one uh, flag the notification to be off on production to not scare users? So that's also the same question. I think. Yes, so the answer is the same here. Yes. Yeah. So the production this shouldn't be that actually would be a security risk. I would say if you have the full list of as bomb and vulnerabilities listed to end users. So the, that's like. By design, it's intended not to be, uh, it will not make its way to production. All right. I think those are all the questions they have. I have just actually one question that I wanted to ask as well. Can one change the UI of the URL in development that shows in the development that you can access the kit at? Uh, can you repeat the question? So uh, you access it. You can you can see the notification. It opens automatically if there is a vulnerability. But uh, you can also access it in development via, via URL, right? Yes. Can I change this in development? Is it configurable? The parameter is not configurable. Uh, okay. You need to use that parameter exactly. Okay. Maybe possible enhancement to enable the configuration of this. 
Yes, we have a couple of configuration for upset kit. We can add this one also. All right. And was it that it supports all tech stacks, uh, Java, CDI, Spring? Yes, it supports uh, Spring, CDI also, and uh, the Java. Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, and if 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 you are interested, you can read about uh, the release in the AppSec Kit uh, blog post. And there is the documentation pages in Vaadin 8 and Vaadin 7. If you want to request a trial already, you can do it. Just to note that uh, for uh, existing ultimate tier subscriber and extended maintenance customers, they already have access to this at no extra charges. So you don't need any trial. And as I mentioned again, uh, very soon the kit will be also available. You know, that's very soon, that's in 2023. Uh, the kit will also be available for uh, latest Vaadin versions, Vaadin 24 and latest Hella version. Actually, there's one more question for production environment. Can we have a dedicated endpoint for vulnerability report? Mm, not at the moment, I believe, Tamash. I, yes, uh, there is no uh, option for this now. If, if I, I guess it's possible to have a configuration to disable it so that it can make its way to production mode. So I would argue that the default should remain, that it should be not available in production mode. But if you have a very specific use case where you want to actually have it accessible in production, then maybe we can provide this as a configuration option. That's, I imagine, would be rather straightforward to, to enable. Yeah, I think that's maybe you can make a note of this and as create a ticket about it. Tamash, please. Sure, sure. Can I use, and actually there's another question that came up now. Can I use any part of the AppSec kit, for example, with custom theme, uh, if we need some customization? It, it will, uh, also the question, can we change the URL as well? So that's, I, I had the same question actually, and, and the answer yeah, Tamash said like, no, we cannot do it now, but I think we should configure the URL. And uh, the customization of the theme, I'm not sure how that works, actually. I think uh, for the upset kit, you have the theme and you can uh, customize it. Only just uh, your application. So you can add like some CSS or like some, you have selectors that you can use to style it? If needed, we have selectors. Um, yeah, if, if, if I think, uh, yes, if you, yes, if you use those selectors and override, then, then yes, you can customize it probably. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's wait. No more questions I'm going once. All right. Thank you all again for your participation and your questions. And uh, please reach out to us if you have any uh, other questions. We'd be happy to discuss with you related to your specific use cases. Thank you all and have a good day.